Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna check out if take two of the Hanna Magnesium Checker is the winner, or if second time is not really a charm. All right, thank you for joining me in another episode of Parker's Reefs. And as touched on in the intro, today we're gonna to see whether second time is a charm for the Hanna Magnesium Checker. Long-term viewers of the channel may recall that way back in June, Hanna finally released the much anticipated and eagerly awaited saltwater magnesium checker. There was actually a freshwater magnesium checker kicking about for a while that um, did confuse some people, but this was their saltwater checker that came out. I, like many, many others, flocked to my local fish store, picked this unit up. Maybe I wasn't a day one purchase, but I was, I think, at least week one purchase. Brought it home, tested my water to find out that it just flashed the maximum result and was reading somewhere in the vicinity of four, five, six hundred above the level of where my magnesium actually was. The response from Hannah, some people thought it was fantastic. Some people, like myself, thought it was a little bit poor in that um, they sat on it for about a month telling people they weren't doing things right, that they didn't use the tips of the syringe or that they didn't shake it or leave it long enough or the vial was dirty, etc., etc., etc. And then finally went, whoops, we stuffed up. We actually got the uh, reagents wrong and it's going to give you a high reading. Yeah, we know. Fast forward a few months from there, what sounded like a pretty quick and simple fix did actually take some time. Obviously, Hannah did not want to mess this up a second time around. And um, here we are now with take two of the Hannah Checker. Now, this one does have a change to the instructions and to the reagents. So I snapped one up as soon as they became available at local fish shop because I wanted to do a thorough test for you guys at home to see whether you should trust Hannah a second time on this Hannah Magnesium Checker or whether this is another one of their lines that you give a miss. Now, I say another one, I don't wanna make it sound like I'm a Hannah hater. I am actually a fanboy on a couple of their units, but I don't like the rest. For those playing along at home, I love their alkalinity checker, I love their phosphate checker, and I absolutely love their nitrate high range checker. But the other ones out there, Calcium, absolutely a no-no. The early version of the magnesium, definitely a waste of time. Uh, the low range nitrate, forget about it. And to be honest, I don't even like their conductivity pen, but that's not specifically Hannah. I just don't like conductivity pens in general. But um, enough chatting, let's have a look what comes in the new and improved magnesium checker. Then we'll run through a couple of tests and see whether this unit matches up with my recently done Triton ICP, what my Mastertronic is very consistently reporting as my magnesium levels, which also matches up with the ICP and also the reef bot a lab that are testing, as well as my manual aquaforest test kit. They're all reading about 1290 to 1320. So um, let's see if the Hannah check can get near there. But first things first, let's do an unboxing. All right, so here we have the new and improved Hannah magnesium checker, the marine one. Don't be fooled, there are some freshwater ones out there that um, I must say, I fairly frequently see online people trying to use in saltwater tanks. Let's open this guy up, see what we get. There is one distinct change, and that is that uh, we now have a different reagent. I think it was part B that's now different. Um, I think it's the powder actually that's different, but uh, let's set this checker up. You obviously get the checker, you get your little protective uh, cover. We get a battery in the pack here, and uh, we've got to do this awkward uh, base plate removal, which I have to admit, I really struggle with. I wish they made this a little bit easier. Undoing the screw, easy enough, no worries. But then you've got to try and pry this little plate off without damaging the connector, which, oh, yep, okay, that worked. Whew, always makes me nervous. Okay, positive side of the battery, which is the little nipple part, points to the bottom. So uh, push that in there, push your plate on and put that screw back in and um, worry about doing that again in about a year's time because, uh, Every time I find it so awkward. In fairness, I probably could have got a bigger screwdriver, but hey, we got it. All right, now in the pack, we get two syringes. One's gonna be for tank water, one's gonna be for this reagent. We get two tips for eat, or for said syringes, which just push on. We get two vials because uh, it's always handy to have a spare vial. We get uh, the liquid reagent, we get a powder reagent, and we get the all important if I can get them out. Instructions in both the uh, written format and the one I prefer to follow, the uh, quick sort of reference instructions. So 
I guess we should have a look at the instructions here and work it out. So uh, step one is to turn the unit on. Now that the battery's in there, you press a button, does that. You then draw four mil of reagent A straight away or reagent zero, which is the liquid. Put that straight into your vial. You then grab a five mil of, rea uh, five mil of tank water, put it into the vial, give it a shake five times, make sure, or tip it upside down five times, make sure there's no bubbles. Then you press the button on there so that it goes from C1 to C2. Once it shows C2, you then take one packet of uh, the second reagent, the powder, put that in there. You then tip it upside down 18 times, which is an incredibly precise amount, but sure. Wait 30 seconds, put the vial into the checker. You can either wait three minutes and press the button or you can hold the button down for three or for a little bit until it does a three minute countdown. Once it gets to the end of the countdown, it will give you your magnesium in a PPM. So I figured no time like the present, we may as well give it a test. All right, let's give this unit a test. I'm gonna follow the uh, quick instructions here and step one is to turn it on by pressing the button. Should show all the uh, digits on the screen and then go to C1 like it has now. Next up, we grab our curvette and we put four milliliters of uh, the liquid reagent or reagent A in there. So uh, I'm gonna draw that out now. I recommend drawing this very slowly because it's a pretty fine little syringe on there. Bottom of the plunger to four. Looks good to me. You will get a little air gap in there, totally normal because you do have this long tip on the syringe. I'm going to squeeze that in there, happy days. Put the uh, lid back on my reagent and get it out of the way so I don't get it confused with anything else. Now I need to grab five milliliters of tank water, which I've already done. Same deal with the tip on because uh, you guys did mention I didn't use the tips enough last time. So I'll use the tips this time and uh, I'll bring the bottom of the plunger up to five milliliters, which you will get, again, get an air gap because of the tip. No problem there. We're measuring off the base of the plunger. Squeeze that in there. We should now have nine milliliters total in here, which is just a little bit below the, uh, the 10 milliliter indicator sign in there. Again, completely normal. I'll give that a second just so it uh, gets all those sort of bubbles out of there because the fine tips do tend to uh, squeeze it in there pretty quickly and uh, stir things up, which is both a pro and a con, I guess. All right, now we can tip the unit upside down five times. Two, three, four, five, and flip over our instructions, which now tells us to put the unit or the curvet in the unit, press the button until it says C2, which it will in a second. It's thinking, 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 should be doing a, a zero sample now. Now it says C2, we're good to progress, so we can uh, open that up, get one packet of our uh, powder reagent, which I think is reagent D, or reagent two is what I'd call it, but sure. Open up your powder. Everyone's got a different approach to doing this. I like to uh, just tear one side off and then you make a little funnel like that. But um, you guys do you, everyone's got a different approach for the uh, Hannah powders, which is funny because it's probably only two, maybe three ways I can think of doing it, but make sure you get all that out. Have now, happy days. Now the instructions are quite specific here. They say to tip it up, down, upside down, up the pack way, the right way again, 18 times. So uh, let's do that. One, two, 17, 18. Now we need to let that sit for 30 seconds for all the bubbles to dissipate out. So we'll let it do that. All right, we're right to add that in. And then what we have to do is hold the button down until we get a three minute counter. So I'm gonna do that. Hold the button down, long press, and we get a three minute countdown. We can then let it do its thing for three minutes and we'll get our results. Alternatively, if you don't wanna do the long hold, you can just wait three minutes and press the button with a single click, but um, let's use the built-in timer and uh, see where we end up. This is actually my second test. I wanted to do one before doing the video just to make sure that I had my head around how it works and uh, I'll show the results on screen now. All right, five. Four, three, two, one. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Let's see what Hannah reckons. 1570, still reading considerably high by uh, my Triton ICP, my Master Tronic, my Reef Bot, and uh, my uh, Aquaforest manual test, which are all reporting around 1290 to 1320. But um, I don't know, I guess we're 30 ppm closer than we were from the first test. 
I was just about to pack up all the uh, HANA magnesium testing equipment when my cat had a good idea. He said, let's test some uh, Aquaforus reference solution that should be 1310 ppm. Here comes the result now, 1625, still reading about 300 above what uh, I was expecting. So at least it's consistent. I can probably still use this device and uh, minus 300 off the results it gives me, but um, I don't know, at least with it consistent, it tells me that I probably am doing something wrong. Let me know what you guys think. All right, guys, there you have it. That is my take on the HANA Magnesium Checker Revision 2. I'd like to know if you can see that I was doing anything wrong in the test there, or if I've just been super unlucky and got a dud unit. It, in my opinion, or in my tests at least, is still reading high. Now, I know that is not the case across the board because I have seen and heard many people out there, many of whom I highly trust and regard their opinion, that says it is spot on and very simple to use, which I can agree, it is simple to use and very accurate. The accuracy claims for me were not quite there. In fact, it was still reading high for me. But I would like to know if you think I'm doing something wrong with this test because um, as far as I can tell, this one goes into the not hot pile, not the hot pile with some of the other Hannah checkers out there. Anyway, guys, I will wrap the video up there. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If there's any questions, comments, or absolutely feedback on what I'm doing wrong with this checker, please pop it in the comment section down below because I do personally reply to each and every comment there. It is the best way to get hold of me. And of course, if you're yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. It takes two seconds of your time, costs no money whatsoever, and you'll make sure you do not miss out on any further unbiased videos or reviews like this uh, Hannah Checker review here. Anyway, guys, I'll stop rambling there. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, Stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers, bye.